got it. Why did you reject the pretty girl? Story one. Back in high school, there was this girl who I thought was the absolute greatest. I'd been crushing on her hard, and not in some fleeting way either. We're talking about nearly a year of trying to get her to notice me. I'd sit with her at lunch, join in on group hangouts she'd be at, try to make her laugh, all that stuff. Basically, I was doing my best to be a friend, hoping she'd somehow realize there could be more between us. But it just never happened. I was stuck firmly in the friend zone, and honestly, it sucked. I didn't want to give up, though. So I decided to go big or go home. And what better way to make a move than asking her to prom, right? Prom was a big deal back then, and I thought, hey, maybe if we had this magical night together, she'd see me in a different light. So, heart pounding in my chest, I finally mustered up the courage and asked her. To my surprise, she didn't turn me down outright. But she didn't exactly leap into my arms with joy either. She sort of hesitated like she was weighing her options or something. Then, after what felt like the longest pause in history, she said yes. I was ecstatic, or at least I thought I was. But then reality set in. As we got closer to the big night, it became pretty clear that she wasn't excited about going to prom with me. She was just excited about going to prom, period. She was talking about her dress, the limo, the after-party plans, all the typical prom stuff. And me? I was just the guy who happened to be her ticket in. That realization hit me like a ton of bricks. I didn't want to be someone's background accessory. I wanted to be with someone who was as excited about me as they were about the idea of prom itself. So my crush on her just kind of faded. It was like a switch flipped in my head. I still went to prom with her, of course. I wasn't going to back out and be that guy, but I knew my heart wasn't in it anymore. I was just going through the motions, counting down the hours until it was over. I even remember standing there, watching her chat with her friends and thinking, this is so not how I pictured this night going. But here's the twist. During one of the slow dances, I found myself partnered with another girl from our school. I didn't know her super well, but we'd had a few classes together. As we swayed awkwardly to some sappy love song, she looked up at me and just said, out of nowhere, you know, I've always kind of liked you. I was, I mean, I'd been so wrapped up in my one-sided crush that I'd completely missed that someone else had been noticing me. We spent the rest of the song talking. And for the first time that night, I felt like I was really there. Not just some prop in someone else's fairy tale. It was like a light bulb went off in my head. Here was someone who actually saw me, liked me for who I was, not for what I could do for them or where I could take them. After that, things just clicked. We started dating not long after prom, and it turned out to be one of the best decisions I made in high school. That girl, let's call her Emily, was genuine, funny, and kind. She didn't play games, and she made me realize that sometimes what you're looking for is right in front of you, just not where you expected to find it. It's crazy how one night can change everything you thought you knew about yourself and what you want. Story 2. I've had my fair share of relationships in the past, and let me tell you, they were something else. I've been lucky enough to date some truly beautiful women, the kind of women who could turn heads in any room. You know, the ones who made you feel like the luckiest guy in the world just standing next to them. But as I soon learned, looks only get you so far. Some of them, as stunning as they were, didn't have much going on beyond the surface. Conversations felt like I was talking to a brick wall. We'd go out, and sure, everything looked great on the outside, but there was no real connection. No spark, nothing deeper. It was like trying to start a fire with wet wood. Frustrating and ultimately pointless. And then there were the ones who took things to a whole new level of crazy. I'm talking about the type who'd start a fight if I so much as said hi to another woman. It didn't matter if it was a co-worker, a friend, or even the waitress taking our order. The jealousy was off the charts, and it wasn't just the jealousy. There was this unpredictable, almost volatile energy, like walking on eggshells. I'd be sitting there, minding my own business, and suddenly, boom, a huge blowout over nothing. One time, I got an earful because I held the door open for an elderly lady at a restaurant. I mean, come on! After a few of those wild rides, I'd had enough. I was done with the whole dating scene, done with trying to figure out what was going on in anyone's head. I went into what I like to call relationship hibernation. No more dating apps, no setups, no hookups. Just me, my own space, and the peace and quiet that came with it. It was liberating in a way. Just living my life without the drama, without the constant second guessing. I even started to wonder if I was just better off on my own. And for a while, that was okay. Then, as these things tend to go, just when I decided to swear off relationships altogether, she came into my life. I met my wife completely by accident. There she was, standing across the room at a friend's party, and I was just struck. It wasn't just that she was beautiful. She had this presence, this energy that I couldn't ignore. I felt this pull towards her, and it scared the hell out of me. I mean, after all I'd been through, the last thing I wanted was to dive back into that mess of emotions. But something about her was different and I knew it almost immediately. We started talking, and right away I could tell she wasn't like anyone I'd met before. 
She was smart, funny, and had this incredible way of making everyone around her feel comfortable. It was effortless with her. There were no games, no pretense. She was just herself, and it was like a breath of fresh air. Still, I couldn't help but be cautious. I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop, for her to reveal some hidden crazy, or for me to realize that this was just another mirage. I spent that first year holding my breath, half expecting things to go south at any moment. But they never did. The more time we spent together, the more I realized she was exactly who she seemed to be. Real, honest, and somehow miraculously she got me. She didn't try to change me or mold me into something I wasn't. She accepted me, flaws and all. Story 3. So, I just graduated high school and was heading off to college. I was dating this girl back then, and at first she seemed fine, you know? She had her moments, but don't we all? It didn't take long for her temper to start showing, though. She'd have these outbursts, saying stuff like I was ugly and that no one else would ever want me. And then, as if that wasn't enough, she'd apologize right after, blaming it on that time of the month. I figured maybe that's just how relationships were sometimes, or maybe it was just her. I was young and pretty clueless about what was normal and what wasn't. A couple of months into college, everything changed. I was meeting all these new people from different backgrounds, way different from the little East Texas town I grew up in. Back home, everyone was pretty much the same. I mean, in my entire grade, we had one Muslim guy and one Asian kid, and that was it. But now I was meeting people from all over, and it was refreshing. I got placed in advanced calculus for the semester, which was full of people who had scheduling conflicts, so they just threw them all in there with me. I was pretty good at math, and I ended up tutoring a bunch of my classmates. There was one guy, though, who was even smarter than me. This dude was from some country where education wasn't great, and he'd taught himself calculus from scratch. I was in awe of his determination and brilliance. Anyway, one day I get a message on GroupMe from someone I didn't know. The profile picture was a guy, and the name was something I'd never heard before. They wanted to study that night. I said sure, but then they canceled and rescheduled for the next evening, offering to buy me food at the university center. I thought, why not? Free food and a chance to help someone out with calculus? Sounded like a good deal to me. Turns out the profile picture was her boyfriend, and she was the one who had been messaging me. And let me tell you, she was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. Picture Jasmine from Aladdin, but even more stunning. I was completely blown away. I'm usually oblivious when it comes to girls liking me, so I just figured she was being friendly. She said group me used too much data and asked for my phone number so we could coordinate study sessions more easily. I didn't think much of it and gave it to her. As time went on, things got complicated. My girlfriend and I broke up after two years of dating. I was only really upset for that night, which should have been a clue about how I really felt. Meanwhile, Calculus Girl, let's call her Sarah, started opening up to me more. She told me about her boyfriend, how he was controlling, verbally abusive, sometimes even physically. It broke my heart to hear what she was going through, but I was glad she trusted me enough to confide in me. She said she felt safe with me because I was this no-drama, good Christian cowboy, as she put it. Sarah and I grew closer. We'd study together, and sometimes we'd just hang out, talking about everything and nothing. She even started asking about my faith and showing interest in Christianity, which was huge because her family was Muslim. I made it clear that I wouldn't date someone unless they shared my faith or were open to it, and it seemed like she was genuinely curious. It was amazing to see her exploring this new part of herself. Then, she confided in me that her boyfriend was blackmailing her. Story 4. I remember the exact moment it hit me. I was sitting on the couch, staring at the woman I thought I'd spend the rest of my life with, and I felt nothing but this heavy, empty sadness in my chest. It made no sense, really. She was everything anyone could ask, stunningly beautiful, funny as hell, supportive in a way that made me feel invincible. Her imperfections made her even more endearing, like how she'd obsess over the smallest things, or the way she'd fiercely defend me if someone even looked at me sideways. And of course, there was that adorable habit of switching our meals at restaurants when mine looked better, as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Those quirks made her real, and I loved her for it. But here's the thing. While she was close to perfect, I realized that I wasn't. Not in the way that matters. It wasn't that I didn't love her. I did. I loved her so much that it hurt to see her so dedicated to making me happy while I was sinking deeper and deeper into this pit of unhappiness. And it wasn't because of anything she did. She was trying her best to be everything I could possibly want. But the truth was that I didn't even know what I wanted. Not in the way everyone says you should. I thought for a while that I just wasn't cut out for relationships. I mean, I had everything you're supposed to want. An amazing partner who adored me. A relationship that people envied. But it felt like I was constantly lying to myself, trying to fit into this mold that I just didn't belong in. I was becoming miserable, and I could see that it was starting to affect her, too. She was changing trying to adapt to my moods and to my needs, and in doing so, she was losing parts of herself. 
It was like watching someone slowly drain the color out of a painting. And that's when I knew I couldn't keep going. It wasn't fair to her. She deserved someone who could give her the love and happiness she was so willing to give me. So I let her go. It was the hardest thing I've ever done because I knew it would hurt her and I hated myself for that. But I also knew that if I didn't, we'd both end up resenting each other. She deserved more than I could give and I needed to stop pretending that I could be the partner she needed. It wasn't just her though. This had been a pattern for me, a painful cycle I'd repeated with every woman I had dated. I'd always thought that maybe I just hadn't met the one, that mythical person who would make everything click into place. But the problem wasn't them, it was me. I was chasing an idea of what a relationship should be, what happiness should look like, instead of being honest with myself about what I really wanted. And the truth was, I didn't want to be married. I didn't want kids. I didn't want to fit into the societal expectation of love and partnership. Once I accepted that, really accepted it, it was like a weight lifted off my chest. I could breathe again. My future stretched out before me like a clear, open sky, full of possibilities that I'd never let myself consider. I felt free for the first time in my life, free to be who I am, not who I thought I was supposed to be. And that freedom felt like sunshine after a long, dark winter. Society has this way of telling you that being single means you're missing out, that you're somehow incomplete if you're not paired off, that love and togetherness are the keys to a meaningful life. And if you don't have them, you're destined to be lonely and sad. I used to buy into that. I used to think that I was broken or behind, constantly chasing this ideal I didn't really believe in. But now, now I see that happiness isn't something you find in someone else. It's something you find in yourself. I don't feel lonely ever. I have amazing friends, a family who loves me, and a life full of things that make me happy. And most importantly, I've learned what matters to me, what truly makes me feel alive. I hear about how hard the pandemic has been for people, how isolation and loneliness have weighed on them. And I get it. It's tough. But for me, it's been a revelation. I've realized that I'm completely at peace with my own company. I don't need anyone else to complete me or validate my existence. I know who I am and I'm happy with that person. Story five, you'd think that by now I'd have it all figured out. I'm 30, I've got my life together, a stable job, a nice place, and a group of friends that are more like family. But when it comes to dating, man, it's a whole different beast. Tinder in particular is like stepping into a swirling vortex of madness where half the people are looking for something serious and the other half are just passing time, swiping left and right like they're playing some weird digital slot machine. It's a mixed bag of absurdity and I'm starting to wonder if I'm the only one who feels this way. It's not that I'm overly picky. At least, I don't think so. My standards aren't that steep, they're just common decency. If you're kind to the people around you, interested in more than just the superficial, and know how to hold a conversation without staring at your phone every five seconds, you're already ahead of the game. But it's shocking how rare that seems to be. It's like everyone's forgotten the basics of being a decent human being. One thing that really grinds my gears is the sheer number of people who seem to think they're doing me a favor by agreeing to go on a date. I get this vibe sometimes, this sense of entitlement like they're gracing me with their presence and I should be eternally grateful. I'm not asking for the moon here, just some mutual respect and a little interest in getting to know each other. But when they start acting like they're doing charity work by showing up, that's where I draw the line. I'm not going to be anyone's ego boost, and I certainly don't need someone who thinks they're above treating others with basic respect. And let's talk about the behavior. If you're rude to wait staff, that's a hard no. I don't care how good looking you are or how interesting your profile made you seem. If you can't treat people with kindness, there's not going to be a second date. And then there's the personality thing. I don't need someone to be a comedian, but if you're sitting across from me with all the excitement of a wet turkey sandwich, that's not going to cut it. I've had enough boring, one-sided conversations to last a lifetime. I'm looking for someone with a spark, someone who's genuinely interested in sharing a moment, not just ticking off a box on their dating checklist, and for the love of everything, put the phone down. I get it. We're all connected these days, but if you can't make it through dinner without scrolling through Instagram or texting your friends, then what's the point? I'm here, trying to get to know you, and you're checking out cat memes. That's not just a pet peeve, it's a deal breaker. It tells me you're not present that you'd rather be anywhere but here, and I'm not going to compete with your phone for attention. The worst, though, is the mind games. Playing hard to get might have been cute in high school, but we're adults now. I don't have time to decode mixed signals or try to guess how you're feeling based on cryptic texts. If I sense you're playing games, I'm out. I'm not interested in chasing after someone who's more invested in being elusive than honest. It's exhausting, and frankly, it's a waste of time. The thing is, I'm not asking for much. I'm not looking for someone to complete me or to make my life perfect. 
I'm just looking for someone to share a few more adventures with, someone who's willing to put in a little effort, who cares about something more than just how we look on paper. I want a partner, not someone who sees themselves as a trophy to be won. I want someone who'll engage with my passions and goals, who'll be there for the highs and lows, not just the Instagram-worthy moments. And I'm willing to do the same for them. But dating has become this nightmarish labyrinth, full of traps and ends. You try to be straightforward and respectful, and you get labeled as stuck-up or arrogant. You're not cute enough to be this picky, they say, as if I should just be grateful anyone swiped right on me at all. I get it. Rejection stings and people lash out. I'm a guy. I'm not supposed to take it personally, so I let them get their jab in and move on. But it's disheartening. I'm not on Tinder to rack up numbers or to find someone to fill a void. I'm there to find something real. Someone real. And it feels like that's getting harder and harder to find. Story 6. Alright, so here's a story that still has me shaking my head. A couple of years ago, I matched with this absolutely stunning German girl on Tinder. I'm talking out of this world gorgeous, like someone straight out of a magazine cover. Now, I'm not exactly a male model myself. On a good day, I'd call myself a solid five, and I've got the dad bod to back it up. So naturally, my first thought was, this has got to be a scam or a catfish, but nope, she was real. We started chatting, and she mentioned she was backpacking through my city with a friend. Against my better judgment, I decided to take a chance and ask them both out for dinner and to show them around. When I picked them up, I was still half expecting the beautiful girl from the photos to be a no-show, but there she was, as jaw-dropping in real life as she was in her pictures. Her friend was friendly and cool too, so I thought, hey, this might actually be fun. We cruised around the city, did the usual touristy stuff, and then I decided to take them to this park by the river. It's a pretty well-known spot, but it's also in a sketchy part of town. But I figured, what could go wrong, right? Turns out, a lot. We get to the park, and there's this wild game of dodgeball going on between a bunch of guys and trans women. It was one of those spontaneous, only-in-this-city kind of scenes that you can't really explain but just have to experience. The girls were completely blown away. They started laughing and pointing, even whipping out their phones to film the game. They thought it was hilarious because apparently you don't see stuff like that in Germany. I mean, sure, it was a pretty crazy sight, but I could see that the players were starting to notice us, and they didn't look too happy about being turned into a spectacle. I tried to play it cool, but I kept telling them to put their phones away. This wasn't exactly the safest neighborhood, and I really didn't want to end up in a situation where we'd have to run for it, or worse, get into some kind of trouble. But they didn't listen. They kept laughing and filming, and I could see the vibe was changing fast. The guys and trans women playing dodgeball started to glance our way with expressions that said, This isn't funny anymore. I was getting more and more nervous, and then annoyed, because these girls weren't getting it. They thought I was just being dramatic, but... I wasn't kidding when I said we might get stabbed if they didn't cut it out. Finally, I had enough. I pretty much grabbed them by the arms and dragged them out of there. I was so mad, but mostly I was worried. I'm a laid-back guy, but the last thing I needed was to end up on the news because some clueless tourists couldn't read the room. The rest of the evening was kind of a wash. The friend was exhausted and just wanted to go back to their hostel, and I was still simmering with frustration. But the German girl, the one who looked like she should be gracing billboards, she was still game. She kept trying to turn the night around, suggesting we check out another place or get a drink. But I was done. I took them back to their hostel, made some excuse about having an early day, and bailed. As I was leaving, I could see the disappointment in her eyes. It was like she'd expected a different ending to the night. Maybe one that involved us. Alone under the stars or whatever romantic nonsense she had in her head. But I was too pissed to care. I just wanted to get home and forget the whole thing. The next morning, I woke up to a text from her at like 8 a.m. She wanted to meet up again just the two of us at a more intimate park. I read the message a few times, debating whether I should give it another shot. But the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. This girl almost got us into a real mess. And now she wanted to act like nothing happened? Nah, not happening. So I just blocked her number. It wasn't the most mature thing I've ever done, but I was still irritated, and I didn't trust myself to say something I'd regret. Maybe I was overreacting, but the whole experience just left a bad taste in my mouth. Story 7 Back in college, I had this wild opportunity to hook up with a former homecoming queen. And not just any homecoming queen. This girl is now a full-blown Broadway actress. You know, the kind of person who's used to the spotlight, who commands attention just by walking into a room. So you can imagine my surprise when she started making moves on me. It wasn't subtle either, like she was really into me. I should have been over the moon, right? But I didn't make a move back. Now, I'd love to tell you that I didn't go for it because I had my eyes on someone else some quirky, artistic girl who seemed more like my type. To be fair, I did end up dating that artsy girl right after. You know the kind, with the wild hair, paint-stained overalls, and a slightly mysterious air about her. But honestly, that wasn't the real reason I held back. 
I could also tell you that I found out the only reason the homecoming queen was into me was because I looked exactly like her ex-boyfriend. And yeah, that part was true too. At some point, she casually mentioned that I was a ringer for this guy. I mean, she might as well have been looking at a mirror image of her past, and I gotta say, that's a little weird. Still, that wasn't what stopped me either. I'm pretty sure she just had a type, and I just happened to fit the bill. The real reason, though. The thing that kept me from diving headfirst into what could have been a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I was absolutely terrified. Flat out, scared. This girl was in a whole different stratosphere, and I was firmly grounded on Earth. It felt like she was so far out of my league I would have needed a cross-country Amtrak ticket just to get close. I couldn't wrap my head around the idea that she'd want anything to do with me. My self-doubt was just that overpowering. I'd like the record to show that she's a genuinely delightful person. The whole, you look like my ex thing, while strange, wasn't as creepy as it sounds. It didn't feel manipulative or shallow. I think she just liked what she liked. And I happened to check that box for her, even if it was by accident. Still, at the time, I couldn't see myself as anything other than the stand-in for the real deal. I didn't have the confidence to view myself as someone she'd be genuinely into. And of course, I was just plain scared. I mean, here's this stunning, successful girl who's destined for bigger things. And here's me. This average dude with a gut, tattoos, and a half-grown mustache that didn't even look cool. I wasn't exactly projecting leading man vibes. While she's all grace and poise, I'm over here tripping over my own feet, both literally and figuratively. I couldn't shake the feeling that if we ever did anything, it'd be like some cosmic joke, and I'd be the punchline. Story 8. Growing up in a summer resort town had its perks. Sunny days, lazy beach afternoons, and plenty of seasonal folks rolling through. People you'd only see for a few months out of the year. There was this one girl, though, who stood out from the rest. Every summer, she'd arrive with her family, staying at a cottage in our neighborhood. She was about my age, and from the moment I can remember, she always had a boyfriend. Always. And not just any guy. She attracted attention like moths to a flame because she was, frankly, drop gorgeous. It didn't matter that we were kids. By the time she was 12, she had this unshakable aura about her. A sort of girl-next-door-meets-teen-heartthrob vibe. And honestly, I don't think I was the only one in the neighborhood who harbored a little crush on her. But for me, she always felt completely out of reach. Not only because of her boyfriends or her looks, but also because her siblings and cousins were good friends of mine and my brothers. Getting involved just seemed complicated. By the time we were in our teens and into college, we got along well enough, but I wouldn't say our friendship had any flirty undertones. It was more casual, a kind of, hey, how's it going, dynamic. Still, there was always that lingering thought in the back of my head that she was way out of my league. The thought of making a move never even crossed my mind. She was in a different world, or at least that's how it felt. Fast forward to the summer before my senior year in college, it was the mid-90s, and we were all home for break. One night, a group of us from the neighborhood decided to meet up for drinks. She was there, of course, looking as stunning as ever. Over the course of the night, she casually mentioned that she'd broken up with her boyfriend a few weeks earlier. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Just one of those passing bits of conversation. But then I started to notice something I hadn't before. She was cozying up to me, getting a little closer as the night went on. Eventually, she asked me to walk her home. We got to her place, and out of nowhere, we kissed. It wasn't just a quick kiss either. This was a, I've liked you for a long time kind of kiss. She told me she'd always had a thing for me, which caught me completely off guard. I mean, this girl who I'd always thought was way out of my league, liked me. The next thing I knew, we were dating, right as we were about to head back to college. It all seemed like a dream at first, like I had somehow stumbled into this perfect situation. But after hanging out with her alone a few times, I started to notice something odd. It hit me that we had never really spent much time one-on-one -on -one before. And now that we were, I realized she had the personality of, well, an eight-year-old. And I don't mean she was just youthful or carefree. No, this was full-on baby talk, all the time. She constantly spoke in this voice, and it wasn't cute, it was just strange. Her go-to activities? Watching cartoons, mostly Disney Channel stuff. She wasn't just into it as a guilty pleasure, it was basically all she could talk about. Around my friends, she was like a deer caught in headlights. Completely awkward, could barely hold a conversation and I found myself constantly having to explain things to her like I was babysitting. And it wasn't just once or twice, this was every time. Anytime we tried to hang out with other people, she'd clam up or just blurt out some off-topic. Comment that left everyone scratching their heads. We had absolutely no common interests. None. Couldn't talk about music, movies, books, life, nothing. It wasn't just that she liked lighter stuff and I liked darker, more mature things. It was that anything above a PG rating seemed to stress her out. We tried going to the movies once, and I had to nix anything remotely serious because she couldn't handle it. 
It was like dating someone from a completely different planet. Still, for five months, we gave it a go. Maybe part of me was holding on to that childhood crush. I mean, she was the hottest girl I had ever been with. Every time we walked into a room, heads turned, and I could see my friends eyeing me like, dude, how did you pull this off? But the longer we stayed together, the more it felt like I wasn't in a relationship. I was babysit. It was exhausting. I couldn't have a real conversation, couldn't share anything deeper, and I felt more and more like I was dating an image, not a person. Story 9. There was this girl I had a thing for, and I'm talking for a long time, probably close to a decade. We'd known each other for years, and we clicked right from the start. It wasn't one of those whirlwind romances where everything's immediate and intense, though. It was more gradual. We got along great, enjoyed each other's company, and genuinely had fun together. Over time, we became close friends, hanging out whenever we could, always laughing, always comfortable with each other. There was an ease to it. Nothing forced, nothing rushed. For a long time, I kept my feelings tucked away. It just didn't seem like the right moment, and honestly, I wasn't sure if she felt the same. But deep down, there was always something about her that pulled me in. Maybe it was the way she could light up a room with her smile, or how talking to her felt like the easiest thing in the world. Either way, I held on to that feeling, that hope for the better part of ten years. I kept thinking one day, maybe. Then life did what life does. We ended up drifting apart for about a year or so. No falling out or drama, just circumstances. I got busy with my stuff, and she had her own path. During that time, I couldn't help but wonder what she was up to, whether she was thinking about me, too, or if maybe I just missed my chance altogether. But then, like some weird twist of fate, we crossed paths again after that year apart. Everything kind of fell into place, or at least it seemed like it did. We started talking again, just like old times. The spark was still there. So we decided to take the leap and go out, make something of it. I remember being so excited about that first date. It felt like something I'd waited for forever. We sat down, started catching up on the past year, what we'd been up to, what had changed. The conversation was flowing, and it felt right. But then, out of nowhere, she casually mentioned that during that time we weren't hanging out, she had picked up smoking. She said it like it was nothing, just another fact in a long string of updates. But to me, it hit like a punch to the gut. I don't know why, but it was like the air got sucked out of the room. Now, I'm not one to judge people for their habits, and I know it probably sounds shallow, but smoking is something I've always had a hard time with. It's one of those things I just can't stand. The smell, the health stuff, all of it. I've never liked it, and I never thought it would be something I'd have to deal with, especially not with her. In my mind, she was always this image of perfection, this idealized version of a person I'd been crushing on for years. And here she was, telling me something that shattered that image. I couldn't help but feel a wave of disappointment wash over me. I tried to play it cool in the moment. I didn't want to make a big deal out of it, didn't want to ruin the night. But inside, I was feeling pretty let down. It's hard to explain, but it was like everything I'd imagined for so long suddenly shifted. I still liked her, don't get me wrong, but this one thing was eating at me. It wasn't even just about the smoking itself. It was what it represented. I'd built her up in my head for so many years, and now, reality wasn't matching the fantasy, but I figured I'd try to make it work. I mean, I'd had feelings for her for ten years, right? Surely I could get past this one thing. I told myself it wasn't that big of a deal, that people have quirks or habits you learn to deal with in any relationship. But the truth is, it was always there, nagging at me in the back of my mind. Every time we hung out, I couldn't help but notice it. The smell of smoke clinging to her clothes, the way she'd light up after a meal. I couldn't shake the thought that it was a deal-breaker for me, no matter how much I liked her otherwise. I tried to tell myself it wasn't a big deal, but the more time passed, the harder it became to ignore. We'd be together, and she'd step out for a smoke, and I'd just sit there feeling this weird mix of frustration and sadness. I wanted so badly for it not to matter. I mean, I'd spent years thinking she was the one. But now, being with her wasn't what I had imagined it would be. It's not like smoking was the only issue. It wasn't like we suddenly didn't get along or stopped enjoying each other's company. But every time she smoked, it was like a reminder that something fundamental had shifted. I started to resent it, honestly. What had once been this idealized, long-held crush was now tainted by this one habit I couldn't look past. Eventually, it became clear to me that I wasn't going to get over it. As much as I wanted to make it work, the smoking was always there. And it was more than just a physical habit. It was a mental block for me. I'd catch myself thinking about it all the time, wondering why I couldn't just accept it and move on. But I couldn't. I had to face the fact that maybe I'd been more in love with the idea of her than who she actually was. After a while, I realized I had to end it. It wasn't fair to her, and it wasn't fair to me to keep pretending like this wasn't an issue. It was hard because, on paper, we should have worked. We had fun together, we had history, but sometimes things just don't play out the way you imagine. And this was one of those times. 
Story 10. There was this actress I'd had my eye on for a while. She wasn't a huge star, but she'd been on a few NBC shows and she was definitely attractive. She had that charisma about her. Someone you'd want to be around and for me, someone I wanted to work with. We ran in similar circles, so it wasn't too surprising when we ended up meeting and hitting it off. The chemistry was there right away and I thought, hey, maybe this could be something. At first, things seemed promising. We had a lot in common. Similar interests, a good sense of humor, the kind of stuff that makes you think there could be something real between two people. I could see us being one of those cool, laid-back couples that just worked. The kind that other people looked at and thought, yeah, those two make sense together. I wasn't just physically attracted to her. I liked who she was as a person, or at least who I thought she was. But here's the thing, she'd just come out of a long relationship, four years, and she made it clear from the start that she wasn't looking to jump into anything serious. She wasn't shy about it either. She was very upfront that she was in a place where she just wanted to have fun, not settle down. And by fun, she meant hooking up. With me, sure, but also with other guys. She wasn't looking for commitment. She just wanted a fudge buddy, to put it bluntly. And she was honest about it. She had other guys she was seeing, and she wasn't hiding that from me. Now, some guys would have been cool with that. No strings, no pressure. Just a casual thing with a gorgeous actress. And yeah, I'll admit, there was a part of me that thought about it. It could have been easy to just go along with it, enjoy the ride. And maybe over time, she'd realize I was the guy she really wanted. That's what a lot of people would tell you to do, right? Stick around. Show her you're the stable one, the one she could count on. But honestly, I wasn't interested in playing that game. I wasn't at a place in my life where I wanted something casual. I'd already done that. I wasn't looking to be just another guy on her roster while she figured things out. I was looking for something more serious, something real. I wanted a relationship with depth, not one that was based on hookups and maybe someday fantasies. And while I could have stuck around, spent more time with her, and hoped that things would evolve into something deeper, I just didn't care to. The whole situation started to feel like an emotional game I had no interest in playing. I wasn't about to compete with other guys for her attention. I wasn't going to wait around hoping she'd wake up one day and realize I was the one. I didn't want to be a placeholder while she figured out what she wanted. It's not like she was leading me on. She was totally honest from the beginning. But that didn't make it any easier to swallow. I knew what I was looking for, and this wasn't it. She was fun, sure, and she wanted to spend more time with me. But knowing that I wasn't the only guy in the picture, that was a deal breaker for me. I didn't want to be just another option. And to be fair, I don't think there was anything wrong with what she was doing. She was upfront, clear about her boundaries, and wasn't stringing me along. But it just wasn't what I wanted. I couldn't see myself settling for that kind of relationship, no matter how cool or attractive she was. So I walked away. Some people might say I should have stuck it out, waited for her to come around, maybe even enjoyed the situation for what it was. But I couldn't do it. I wasn't interested in being someone's temporary fling while they explored their options. I wasn't interested in fighting for someone's attention or proving that I was worth more than the other guys she was seeing. I was looking for something real, something where both people are on the same page and committed to each other. And that wasn't happening here. So I made the decision to step back. It wasn't easy because there was definitely a connection between us and part of me really did like her. But the other part of me, the part that knew what I wanted long term, knew this wasn't the right path for me. Story 11. I'll never forget the time I accidentally turned down a girl I had a massive crush on in middle school. You know, the kind of crush where you're absolutely convinced she's the one you'll end up with. Mary, the whole fairy tale. I mean, I'd built this whole future in my head. Wedding bells, picket fences, the works. Yeah, I know, sounds crazy, but teenage me was sure of it. Turns out she actually liked me too. Her brother, this loud kid who was always causing some kind of commotion, would walk past me at school and literally yell, My sister likes you! It happened so often that I just assumed he was trolling me. I mean, who does that, right? I figured it was just some juvenile prank. A weird way for him to mess with me. But looking back now, it was pretty obvious that he was serious. One day, things took an unexpected turn. We were on the train home after school. It was the usual crowd at first. Her friends were there, mine too. But then, in what felt like a scene straight out of some rom-com, her friends suddenly and mysteriously disappeared to another carriage, leaving just her and me alone. I didn't think much of it at first, just figured it was coincidence or maybe they just wanted to give us some space. But boy, was I clueless. She turned to me, her voice soft and kind of hesitant, and asked, Hey, I was wondering, do you have a crush on me? She leaned in, her eyes full of hope, waiting for my answer. This was it. The moment I'd been imagining for months, maybe even years. I could feel my heart pounding like it was about to burst out of my chest. And what did I do? I panicked. I started rummaging through my school backpack, pretending I was looking for something. Like, I don't know, a magic answer that would make everything easier. I completely ignored her question, and instead, 
I changed the subject to some dumb thing my brother did over the weekend. Yep, that's how I handled the girl of my dreams confessing her feelings for me. Genius, right? She leaned back in her seat, clearly disappointed. I could practically feel her excitement drain away in real time. The thing is, I wasn't blind. I knew I was blowing it. I saw her face fall, and some part of me screamed to just admit it, to tell her how much I liked her too. But I didn't. I let that voice in my head, the one filled with doubt and misplaced logic, take over. So why did I do that, you ask? Well, here's the kicker. I had convinced myself that relationships that started in middle school were statistically doomed to fail. I'd heard somewhere that teenage romances rarely lasted, and my brain latched onto that little fact like it was gospel. So, in my infinite 13-year-old wisdom, I told myself, we're not ready yet. Yeah, I was going to wait five more years until we were older and wiser, until we'd left school, and then I'd make my move. Because then it would last, I told myself. That was my grand plan. Of course, life doesn't really work that way. By the time I felt ready, she had already moved on. We drifted apart over the next few years, and eventually, any chance I had with her evaporated completely. I waited so long that she lost interest, and I missed the moment, that perfect moment, that she had handed to me on a silver platter. Looking back, I can't help but laugh at how strange and misguided my ideas about love and relationships story 12. I once dated this absolutely stunning girl. Like, a legit perfect 10. The kind of girl you'd think only existed in movies or on Instagram. Gorgeous doesn't even begin to cover it. For a few months, I thought I'd hit the jackpot. She had that kind of beauty that made heads turn when she walked into a room, and my friends couldn't believe it when they saw us together. On paper, she was everything a guy could want. But let me tell you, the reality was a little different. At first, everything seemed perfect. She was nice, didn't have any drama, and seemed to be into me. But after a while, I noticed something was missing. You know that spark you get from having a great conversation with someone? The banter, the back and forth, where you're not only attracted to them physically, but mentally too? Yeah, that just wasn't happening. Every conversation felt like I was pulling teeth, trying to get her to give me something, anything to work with. It went like this. Where do you want to eat? Oh, I don't care. Whatever you pick is fine. What should we do this weekend? Whatever you want is okay with me. I even tried to get a sense of what she liked, thinking maybe I just needed to dig deeper. What kind of music do you like? I'm not picky. It drove me nuts. I get it. Some people are just more easygoing. But this wasn't easygoing. This was nothing. No opinion, no preference, just blank. She would laugh at all my jokes, but after a while, I realized she didn't actually get any of them. It was the same laugh every single time, like it was on autopilot. And believe me, I've got a decent sense of humor. Some of those jokes were funny, damn it. And then there was the bedroom. You'd think with someone that gorgeous, there'd be some kind of fiery passion, but nope. It was like she didn't even care to be there. I had to make every move, initiate everything, and it felt like she was just going through the motions. No enthusiasm, no feedback. Nothing to indicate if she liked it, hated it, or anything in between. It really started messing with my head. I'd be lying there afterwards, second-guessing myself, like, is it me? Am I doing something wrong? I thought I knew what I was doing. I'd never had any complaints before. In fact, I'd been with people who made it clear they were having fun. But with her, I just didn't know. After a few months, it got so frustrating that I couldn't take it anymore. I mean, sure, she was beautiful, absolutely stunning. But there was nothing else to connect with. I felt like I was dating a mannequin. No personality, no humor, no emotion. And I tried to figure it out, believe me. Was it me? Maybe I just wasn't the right guy for her. But she never gave me any indication. It was like trying to solve a puzzle where half the pieces were missing. So eventually, I broke it off. My friends thought I was insane for doing it. Dude, she's a 10! Are you crazy? They'd say. But I didn't go into detail with them because I didn't want to badmouth her. I just told them it didn't work out and left it at that. What was I supposed to say? That I was bored out of my mind and felt like I was dating a robot? The breakup itself was surreal. I sat her down, told her it wasn't working for me, and that I thought it'd be best if we went our separate ways. She smiled. The same smile she always smiled and said, Okay, that was it. No questions, no argument, no emotion. Just, okay. I walked away from that conversation more confused than ever. I couldn't tell if she was relieved, indifferent, or upset. I half expected her to just move on and forget all about me. But months later, I ran into one of her friends, and she told me that the girl had been absolutely heartbroken over it. Heartbroken! That blew my mind. I wanted to bash my head into a wall. How was I supposed to know she cared? She never showed any emotion, never talked about how she felt, never gave me any indication that she was anything but indifferent. And that's when it hit me. Communication is everything. I mean, I felt awful about breaking her heart. But at the same time, I had no idea she even cared. She never gave me a single clue. I'm not a mind reader. 
I can't guess what someone's feeling if they don't tell me, or at least show it in some way. It was a huge lesson for me. You can be with the most beautiful person in the world, but if there's no communication, no emotional connection, it's never going to work. So yeah, communication, kids. It's more important than you think. Story 13. Let me tell you about the girl I dated before I met my wife. We were together for two years, and from the outside looking in, it seemed like we had it all. She was smoking hot, the kind of girl who could turn heads wherever she went. We had some shared interests too, so things just clicked in the beginning. She loved me, like really loved me. She wanted to be around me all the time, constantly by my side. And at first, I didn't see any problem with that. I mean, who doesn't want to feel wanted, right? But as time went on, I started noticing some cracks. It wasn't anything big at first, just little things here and there. Like how she always wanted us to stay in rather than go out. I'm a social guy. I've always had a good circle of friends, and I enjoyed spending time with them. But she wasn't a fan. I tried to get her to come along to group outings, but she'd always have an excuse, and eventually, she just stopped trying. Instead, she preferred when it was just the two of us. Like our whole world had to revolve around each other. She was also weirdly paranoid about my friends, especially their girlfriends. For reasons I will never understand, she was constantly worried that these other girls were into me. I'm talking about the girlfriends of my friends, mind you, not random people. She would make these little comments like, Are you sure she's not into you? Or, Did you notice how she looked at you? It was exhausting. The truth was, these girls were not interested in me at all. And I'd known them long before I even met her. It wasn't just the girlfriends, though. She thought my male friends were shallow, too. She'd nitpick everything they did, convinced they were somehow bad for me, like they didn't have my best interests at heart. It got to the point where I started seeing my friends less and less. I didn't want to deal with the tension, the constant questioning, and her making me feel guilty for even wanting to hang out with them. My wide circle of friends gradually became a dot, just her. And the more isolated I became, the more suffocating it felt. I could feel my world shrinking. But I kept telling myself, this is love, right? Sacrifice is part of the deal. But it wasn't just my friends. She didn't like my family either. To be fair, my family is pretty tight-knit and we've always been close. That's just how we are. But she didn't see it that way. She thought they were constantly judging her, like every family gathering was some secret tribunal where they would dissect her flaws behind her back. She believed they were scheming, plotting things against her for reasons I could never quite wrap my head around. In reality, my family didn't have anything against her. Sure, they had their concerns, but it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It was more of a, hey, is everything okay? type of thing. But she took it personally like they were out to get her. Over time, the tension between her and my family became unbearable. Every time we'd visit them, I could feel the stress building. I'd be playing referee, trying to smooth things over, but it always ended the same way. Her feeling hurt and me feeling stuck in the middle. I tried to talk to her about it. To explain that my family wasn't out to get her, and that maybe she was reading too much into things. But it never worked. She couldn't let go of the idea that they were somehow conspiring against her. And it became this ever-present cloud hanging over us. Eventually, it all came to a head. I realized that I was losing myself in the relationship. I had drifted away from my friends and my connection with my family was strained. I felt like I was living in a bubble with her, cut off from the people who knew me best. The thing is, I love my friends and family. They're a part of who I am and they've shaped me in so many ways. And as much as I cared about her, I couldn't ignore the fact that she was trying to pull me away from them. It wasn't just about who I spent my time with. It was about me, the person I was at my core. One day, it hit me. If she couldn't accept my friends and family, if she couldn't even tolerate the people I loved, how could she truly love me? Because they are part of who I am. They're not just background noise or side characters in the story of my life. They're woven into the fabric of it. If she couldn't understand that, then what future did we really have? In the end, I chose them, my friends, my family, over her. It wasn't easy. Breaking up with her was hard because in her own way, she did love me. I knew that. But I needed more than just someone who loved me. I needed someone who could love the life I had built, the people who had shaped me and the world I came from. If she couldn't do that, then she couldn't really love the person I truly was.